Welcome back guys, welcome back to another episode of a new series that I'm doing which makes absolutely no sense But what we're doing is we're looking at pubs and in these pubs I'm just gonna be looking at 10 second segments of random players and pointing out their mistake because frankly I get told a lot by players speed I didn't make any mistakes in this game and yet I lost what's the problem you're the problem all right this is a 3k MMR game, so it's like, I think it's like the average of the typical viewer, right? Something like that. I'm gonna watch 10 second clips. I wanna point out what they're doing wrong and clearly show because this is completely random. I haven't watched this replay. I'm just gonna click on them. I'm gonna click start and I'm gonna tell you that they're clearly almost always doing something wrong the entire game. So how could you have made no mistakes? Also around the main Game Leap website, I plan to do some more content in terms of pro replays. Usually I focus more on doing the pro replays for YouTube, but I want to do a few for the main website as well. In addition, I'm doing random 6k if you don't know what that is. Random 6k is where I basically play pubs and I analyze my own games so you can get in the head of, you know, me a pro player because typically when I'm doing these pro replay analysis, I have to, and not completely guess, but somewhat guess on what they're thinking and what their opinions are. But when I'm doing my own replay analysis, I can give you exactly what I'm thinking and show you exactly how I win my games and how you can do it too. So the first one, okay, okay, this one, I kind of looked. I kind of looked, not gonna lie, but I can't not point this out. Do you understand that this isn't impact? You're not gonna have impact. You have a hook, you have boots and a wind lace. You wanna know what impact is? You wanna see impact, guys? And this will be, this will be the only, and I swear, this will be the only clip I watched previous because it really just triggers me so much. But you walk up to the lane and you throw the hook, right? Throw the hook. Not only do you miss the hook, you could have killed him. You could kill Drow. If you buy the same items and you walked like this and walked behind her, you'd kill her. Why would you go for a skill shot when you can walk behind her? It makes no sense. You make no sense. All right, next up, I'm just going to start going through it now. We're doing the clip. I mean, Drow apparently doesn't care that Pudge is ever around her. Hopefully, she'll get the last hit. Okay, close. All right, it's five minutes in. We're going to watch Bat Rider. Um... Looks like he's got a couple stacks onto the Sven. He's flying in. Kind of wish he didn't click fly that early. Oh no, T the CM's flying out. Okay, okay. He's got five stacks on Sven. That looks like it's going to be a kill. You know what? That was relatively well played. I'm going to give him some credit. All right, I was expecting to do only hate. That was pretty good. Good identification that the Sven was now the kill. Quick ability to turn. Only thing I would say is that you have 17, 18 last hits, and it's five minutes and 45 seconds in, which is actually, ah, that's, you know, that's not that bad for Batrider. That's not that bad. All right, next up, we got Drow, and <laughs> I'm sorry if any of you, <laughs> I'm sorry if anyone watches this and you feel bad. I, my goal is not to bully, it's to help, all right, all right? But if we go back here, I'm going to give you a quick tip, Drow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you up with a fat tip. This is a fat Drow tip. And frankly, it's a fat tip for anyone who is looking to amplify their farm when they have an ability that shoots in an area. What she should do is she should walk to either here or here and cast multi-shot in the direction. Now, instead... Looks like you go for the multi-shot um, over the hill play. Uh, frankly, I don't understand the effectiveness of this play, but it is severely limiting your ability to actually flash farm, as multi-shot is your best farming ability. In addition, you are also 0-2, which, considering how that punch was playing, I don't know what you did wrong. There's some, <laughs> there's some positioning issues. Next up, I have to point this out, because, guys, I mean, if you know me, if you know anything about your boy speed, I am a big fan of Eno Jungle, and it looks to me, I'm just putting this out there, it looks to me like Ekka Karma didn't jungle this game because he only has seven last hits eight minutes in you want to know how many last hits you would have if you jungled do you want to know you would have around 80 maybe that's a bit high you'd have around like 60 60 last hits but instead you're this useless veno who's watching your bat rider die that's quite the impact that's quite the impact but i'm no joke guys veno is broken in the jungle if you want to get mmr i'm actually not kidding I don't know why people think I'm joking when I say this. Jungling is broken in solo queue. You can dislike the video now. Speed, don't say that. It's true. Also, if you're excited for this new format of video, please like the video. Obviously, it helps us out, helps me out. I want to keep making content for you guys as this is currently my job, basically full time. And uh, yeah, I mean, helps me out, obviously, if you like the video. So would appreciate it. Dear speed. All right, next up we got Kunkka, and I'm just gonna put this out there. Quelling Blade, I'm gonna read the description for anyone who's new to Dota, even though I'm pretty sure there's no new players. 
Quelling Blade, 150 gold, increases attack damage against non-hero units by 18 for melee heroes. So essentially what this item does is it allows you to actually deal extra damage to creeps. So those are the things that give gold in the game. And for Kunkka, your melee hero, that actually is really good at hitting creeps. So I recommend you pick up that Quelling Blade. It's going to enable you to farm a lot faster because every single time you'd hit this creep, you get an extra 18 damage. And it's actually extremely cheap. Only 150 gold. That's crazy, man. In addition, I feel like Having three open slots is just never the play. I mean, it could be, you know, a Quelling, a Clarity, and a Salve, and I'd be significantly happier. Or just a Wind Lace, and it would just be better. Like, guys, despite, you know, always have to fill in gaps, but nine times out of ten, it's the right move. All right, next up, we're going to watch Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden is actually really farmed. Gets a D-Ward, probably stream sniping, because I don't think you're supposed to D-Ward in this bracket. Don't think that's actually allowed. Don't think that's allowed. You know, I was watching CM, but then we, we kind of looked over to Sven here, and he's actually just walking in circles. So I'm not really sure why he's walking in circles. I feel like he should be hitting creep camps. Similar to what the Kunkka was actually doing, even though Kunkka doesn't have Calling Blade. I feel like my boy shouldn't, instead of chasing a Batrider, a hero that is actually a hard counter to Sven, and actually is very good at killing Sven, what Sven could do is actually just hit the nearby camps. Yes, yes. So instead of doing this, he could actually kill that camp. He could kill that if he got strength. And he could kill that and that. And then he could go mid. And then he could kill mid. And then he could kill this camp. All of a sudden, my man's top net worth. But instead, he's getting run down by a counter of his. It's almost as if Batrider counters him. This game is whack. <laughs> Next up, we're going to pick on Viper. Pudge throwing out another awful hook. Thank you, Pudge, for just ruining the reputation of every Pudge. And uh, the first thing I want to notice is I prefer taking one point of Nether Toxin instead of three in Corrosive. It allows you to farm, so I'd recommend that overall. But the main thing I'd have to say is I don't really know where you came up with this item build from, son. And you might have thought that was me saying, like, son, as in, like, a, you know, putting him down because I'm the father, he's the son. No, but his name is actually son. And he's buying a four staff first item. Now, I have a problem with this. The reason I have a problem with this is it doesn't give you any stats. If you know what stats do, they keep you alive. And, well, I guess it gives you intelligence. But my point is, no one buys face boots on Viper. You want to know why? Because your hero excels in damage when you buy attack speed. And treads are actually much cheaper than face boots right now. So I recommend if you want to win this game, son, you go for treads. You buy two or more Wraith Bands, and then you buy a Dragon Lance. And you'll actually be by far the strongest hero on the map and able to carry your games. But instead, son, you have these items. Okay, I literally skipped forward, and I thought the game glitched because son has not gotten... Like, how is this possible? So, at 9.52, you have 41 CS, right? You smoke up. All right, you know, that's cool. Smoke at a seat. Very cool. Failed gank. Unfortunate. Not the end of the world, though. Kicking dry out of the jungle. Pretty effective play. But then, I thought you TP'd mid to farm. How did you only get... What? What, do you miss all these or something? Okay, you missed only one so far. All right, you got that one. All right, you... You missed three out of four. Eh, that's all right. Looks like you're showing up to the fight. Does anything good happen? I'm sorry I'm breaking the rule of the 10 second clip. I'm just curious how you only got seven CS or eight CS in three minutes. Guys, I don't understand. If you're trying to gain a MMR, just kill some camps. <laughs> Next up on the list, shout out to Schemmer on the CM. Shout out to my boy because he has gotten another D war. Items looking fresh. Would like to see a Clarity or a Windlace. Big fan of Windlace, by the way, guys. I think it's a very underrated item. Uh, in general, movement speed is underrated. But it gets another D ward. Purchase the Gumurki. Purchase Tranquil Boots. Has a magic wand. This build I can feel. Now, I, I do wish he farmed a bit more because that's personally how I would play these games if I was trying to carry. But looks like overall, my man, he's using Glimmer Cape as well. This guy's putting in work. Whoa, Freak Low Leo. What is happening? Let's talk about this play. Actually, fair amount of CS on Freak Low, uh, but let's see the problem here, all right? All right, so it looks like you almost killed the Pudge. Sort of gets away. Okay, you're taking him down with the Radiance. You kind of just overextend. All right, that was so good. Next up, we're going to be on the Nature's Prophet. This is my most played hero. Got like 350 matches on him, so let's see what we can talk about. So the first thing I'm going to notice is that you were standing next to a creep camp. This is the creep camps for definition. I know people uh, always ask in the comments, like, what is a creep camp? That's a joke. But it's this thing right here, right? So this creep camp currently, it, it spawns, right? Two creeps. And if you hit them, you get the gold. So I would prefer while he's doing nothing for him to literally hit the small creep. Because the goal of Dota is actually to build up net worth so you can kill your opponents later on. I mean, I guess the goal is actually to kill the Ancient, but you could just hit the camp considering you're doing literally nothing and you have a global teleport ability. In addition, I feel like you could have teleported. All right, this game is super even, very exciting so far. 
Looks like Drow went for the Axe build. Can't say I'm a particular fan of this because I don't think it's very good with the multi-shot if I believe, and I feel like you want to more so build around your multi-shot. I, I definitely think this build is outdated. Correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't watched any Drow in a bit. Regardless, moving on. Venno, 36 CS. Pretty embarrassing considering your hero can literally farm anything. Nature's Prophet, 105 in 20 minutes. Also embarrassing. Batrider, 86. I'm just gonna pull up the board. Um, why? How is this possible? Both of your heroes are very relatively good at farming. Even this is just terrible. Like, I don't know, man. I'm just getting mad. I'm just mad. I'm kind of mad. Not gonna lie. All right, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to my boy Vmox. Even though he kind of he kind of choked a little bit earlier by going on the Bat Rider, he's made a real comeback story. It's impressive. He's gone for relatively solid items. He's got a magic stick. He's got the trusty shovel. Not using it. That's all right. I make that mistake too. I'm not. I'm actually not kidding about that. He's got a Crystalis. Got an Echo Saber. Gotta be Kiwi. I personally think Mask of Menace is a little bit better than Echo Saber right now because it lets you farm quite a bit faster and it doesn't limit you that hard now that it's only a six second duration. Uh, but then you're going through the axe. So overall, pretty big fan of what's going on here. I'm a pretty big fan of what's going on here. I, I like what I'm seeing from Vmox. Don't think the landing stage was very good or the mid game, but overall farming an item build, pretty good. All right, for this next clip, we're going to be following Freak Show. What is this? What is this? Can't even see your name. Freak Show Leo. Oh, I think I said that earlier. Is that Gambit? He's got the Gambit Esports logo. I'm not gonna lie, man. Not sure why you buy an Assault Kiros. I understand that the enemy team does have physical damage. I do get it. However, why not have a Halberd? Like, it actually hard counters Wind Ranger. The stats on Halberd are actually incredible for Kunkka, if you read the item. It's like, I don't know, it just feels kind of weird to me that you'd go AC. Not that it's that bad, but like, 25 evasion, 20 strength, 20 status resist, and a health and lifesteal amp. I feel like that's really good considering you also get the disarm. AC just, it, it's like not nearly as good. Guys, like sometimes I would actually rather have like a halberd in the early game as Kuga than an AC to some extent. Not saying right now necessarily, like at this point I'd probably trade it out, but like even here it's like, like first off, you legendary sword literally towards nothing. You could have easily wrapped around and hit three heroes. Regardless, you're kind of just dead because you don't kite out. I mean, the Wind Ranger obviously focuses you, but you could have disarmed her and lived, right? And that's just an item build issue. Fix your item build. Like, no bro has ever done this. Why do people do this? It's so bad. All right, next up, I want to take a quick look at the Wind Ranger. And not sure why Wind Ranger has so much damage, right? This is just too much damage, right? Too much damage. MKB Maelstrom. It's just like all you have to do on Wind Ranger is get one DPS item. It can even be a Javelin. And then as long as you buy a BKB afterwards, you are going to do an insane amount of damage because guys, BKB is damage on Wind Ranger, right? No, I know you might be thinking, well, yes, speed, because it's comprised of a Mithril Hammer. Therefore, it gives you damage. No, I'm saying because you stay alive. All right, random 10 second clip of Sven. Um, all right, buying his Daedalus. Kind of wish he hit the nearby camp. Are they roaching? Still got the shovel. I mean, I guess that's all right. He's doing a lot of walking around. This tower push is so inappropriate. Ugh, I guess they're disconnected, but I feel like he's already half HP now. If they take a fight, it's gonna be relatively easy. Mm. All right, they're not going to. What the heck? I, I literally just clicked on this. I somehow didn't notice the whole game, but I click on my boy Prophet, and he's got a soul ring? Dude, what in the world? Like, how do people come up and theorycraft this stuff? It's like, why would you want a soul ring on a hero that does not have mana problems? I don't know what how you're playing Prophet, but if you need a soul ring, there's something wrong. You can just TP back to base with your normal teleport scroll and then TP out of fountain. It's like having a consistent X marks to spot or like bots. I'm just confused on why you would buy a soul ring. In addition, I mean, the Saiyan build's actually relatively fine. His farm's not great. What in the world? What the heck? Was that a misclick? What was that? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh my god. I think he tried to TP back to base, but... <laughs> Instant buyback! <laughs> oh my god, that is- that's awesome. My man. Accidentally TPs to mid, instantly buys back. Literally zero hesitation. He knows he has to get it off cooldown. He knows he has to get it off cooldown. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so Battery is actually doing some efficient farming here. Which surprises me, because if we look at his CS, it's, it's very low, and he was actually the offlaner for this game. So, I don't know how it could be this low. Like, it literally means you're killing a third of a creep every minute. How is that even possible? Like, how do you... Alright, regardless, I'm glad that he's doing that at this point because he really does need this BKB to have proper impact in this game. So I'm glad that he's doing that. I just wish he would have done this a little bit more. Or, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say a little bit. Li literally double or triple what he's doing right now. Regardless, we'll keep watching for now. Kind of some weird stuff going on. Feel like Wind Ranger's dying. Not sure what happened there. Not sure what happened. Probably could have clicked her buttons a little bit better. 
Regardless, let's let's watch out the Sven in this fight. Let's watch out Sven. All right, so fight breaks out. Sven's going into a tough high ground siege right here, right? This is very difficult. He's going into a drow. He's low on HP. Not committing BKB. Okay, that I'm a fan of. He didn't commit BKB. He dies, right? It's bad to commit BKB first when you have Aegis, so I'm glad that he did this overall. Gets lassoed up. Gonna be all right. I think it's good that he's overall not panicking. Clicks the BKB now. Okay. Wouldn't say that was bad. Probably should use your stun. Okay. That was an awful yields from whoever. Okay, looks like they're gonna take the vic- Oh, the yules. Yeah, so, I mean, overall, that was pretty well played by this fed. I mean, this guy confused me in the laning stage overall, but I think he really redeemed himself for the most part, except he might die to the tower here, which is relatively concerning. Okay, no, he lives. But yeah, looks like a good game from the dire. I'm not really sure why or how they won, as I completely just skipped through the game. <laughs> but it seems as if, if we look at the overall net worth, the Wind Ranger and this Sven stand on top. And this is one I'm a bit surprised of. I'm going to assume she has pretty high kills. Yeah, so 15 and 4, because uh, Kunkka is typically a faster farmer than, than Wind Ranger, because Wind Ranger can't push waves very effectively, and Kunkka is one of the best wave pushers in all of Dota. But yeah, I mean, I really just can't help but doing the... I'm basically going to end this video with the overall item build check. We're going to call it the item build check. You know, there's the wave check uh, for like uh, people's hair or whatever. This is the item build check. So we're going we're gonna to start off. Kunkka. I, I feel like you should have a Black King bar. Probably should have bought a Halberd. You can even go Shadowblade in pubs. It's extremely good. But, but moving on. Batrider, you're just really under farmed. I actually don't mind these items that much. I think the Ghost Scepter is quite logical this game. Should you buy it? Eh, I think it's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite a fan of this item actually uh, against lineups like this. So I think it's not bad, but just very under farm really. Veno, it's not bad. You probably could have bought an earlier mech or Helm Dom. I think those two items are probably the best on Veno in the early game, like for early, overall early game fighting, Helm Dom and mech. So probably would have made that my early game items. And then, yeah, once again, you're also just brutally underfarmed. 70 CS in 41 minutes. Like, I, I literally don't know what you're doing for 41 minutes. And don't tell me it's fighting. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Profit. I, I mean, I think the Midas is extremely greedy for pubs. So you should probably just rush the Orchids so you can actually make plays as early as possible. Dry Ranger, this build is just very outdated. Just watch a replay, guys. I, why do you do this to yourself? I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if Drow could have carried this game if she bought just better items. CM overall, pretty solid. This Ag is really bad, though. The problem with the Ags is you need a BKB to basically make it good. Either that or you need the best positioning this world's ever seen, which frankly is almost impossible as, you know, they have Gust, they have um, an Orchid, they have Torrent, they even have like Kunkka Ags and Boat. It's just going to be so hard for you to use this. So this one should be 100% uh, a BKB. But overall, I really like the general build here. I think a Force Staff maybe could be included, but other than that, pretty solid. Sven, yeah, bit under farmed, to be honest. Actually, I shouldn't necessarily say that. It's not as high as you could be, but... Overall, pretty solid item build. Pudge, I'm honestly surprised. I'm honestly surprised because I usually, when I see a Pudge that goes to level one hook, what I typically expect to see from them is that they'll go for this Aether Lens then into like Blink Dagger build or like straight Blink Dagger. And then they have absolutely zero impact because they're a zero armor hero with a thousand HP. But he didn't do that. He went Tranquils in the, into Hood, into Yules, seemingly into Shivas. Do I think this is the best? Um, I think it's okay. I understand why you buy the Yules. It's like to set up hooks and whatever. I'm not a huge fan of this though. I think it's I think it's okay. Pretty good against Kuga to be fair. Pretty good against Rao. Decent against Profit. It's not bad. I'll give you a pass. I think this is like a... I'll say this is like a 7 out of... Or 8 out of 10 build. Wind Ranger. Um, I already mentioned this. I think this build is fine in terms of ending. I just think it needs to be KB much earlier. And finally for Viper. Where are your items my man? How do you have 0 kills on Viper? Like how is that humanly possible in a 41 minute game? I actually have no clue what you're doing to manage to get f literally zero kills. How do you get zero kills in 41 minutes? I actually am so confused. I am genuinely confused. I mean, uh, the item build is like kind of okay, but like where are your items? Do you actually have an Aghanim's Blessing? Please tell me this was from the Roche Pit and you didn't eat your eggs. Like, I, I don't know what to think, son. I don't know what to think. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this layout of the video and feel like you learned something or just enjoyed the overall format, let me know. Also, let me know if you didn't because I'm just trying to test things out, see what type of content works, see if I should try to do more creative projects like this or not and just stick to doing guess the ranks and typical replay analysis because I know you guys like that. But you know, I just want to try some things out. So please give me your feedback in the comment section down below. Peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now.
right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys. 25% and start your journey today.